This is a guide to recognising a faulty temperature sensor and completing repairs. At a minimum, these are the tools and materials you are required to complete this task. A temperature sensor pack includes detailed step-by-step -step instructions. It includes RTD type sensor for the 553 and, and 560 series units, identified by two white cables and the label of course. The solder splices will be required on the older 550 series units which did not have plug type connectors. Temperature sensor faults indicate on the display in two ways. In temp E for inlet temperature error or R temp E for return temperature failure. The sensor could be reading outside the sensor range. This is minus 40 to 36 degrees C. Check for a short in the sensor cable. If this is the case, the menu will indicate a minus 40 degrees C. It could be an open circuit and then the menu will indicate a 36 degrees C. Check for a poor connection in the sensor plugs or damage to the wiring loom. Inspect the connector at the top board and then near the sensor cable itself or for damage to the wiring loom. False errors can be present on both inlet and outlet sensors. These tend to occur when there are high ambient temperatures above 36 degrees C and when the machine has been sitting idle. These should clear when the FBD cycles out after the first freeze down. This one is currently displaying on barrel 1 in temp E or error I on some displays. To access that we go into the service menu. and press the grey button on side 2. In here we scroll through to readouts. We'll go to side 1 readouts. Beta percentage, tank pressure, syrup pressure, return temperature and inlet temperature. The inlet temperature is currently displaying 36 which would describe an open circuit. So to fix this, we will need to isolate the machine. Please remember to isolate and disconnect all electrical equipment before working on it. Inlet temperature sensors are located just below the expansion valves and just above the cold pack. The return temperature sensors are located on the return lines. They are just below the elbow as it heads towards the back and just above the cold pack. Often to gain access to them there are cables and pipes to remove so it's best to use some side cutters and to just carefully unsnip the supporting cable ties to gain better access. Now if you're able to see on the wiring loom that goes back to the circuit board it clearly shows inlet RTD or inlet temperature sensor and the return line for barrel 1 also is clearly marked return RTD and so this is the return temperature sensor. Retractable Stanley knife carefully cut temperature sensor is now exposed, please note this is the incorrect orientation. With it exposed it should now just clip out. So before installing the new sensor we need to prepare the surface, clean it using a scouring pad to make sure we have good contact between the sensor and the pipe. The new sensor should be mounted with cable wires coming out the bottom, just clip back on, like so, not too much pressure on the wires. The sensor installed, reinstate the insulation. We then reconnect our temperature sensor probe into the wiring harness, like so. Then 
then we'll need to get some cable ties and tidy this up. And now we have replaced the faulty sensor. Each barrel has two sensors connected to it, the inlet and return temperature sensor. And that connects to a harness, which then connects to the upper control board, which is behind the LCD display. And in there you can see that clearly labelled with left, centre and right. With the repairs completed, return the unit to its operational state by putting the side back on. Retest and tag the machine and then reconnect the supply. With the machine energised, we'll scroll through to the service menu, access by the grey button, and then scroll through to the readouts to confirm that the sensor is operational. Then scroll through to inlet temp. In the meantime, checking that the top left hand row 1 no longer displays I temp E error.